Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This is the MPN or most probable number method of determining the amount of contamination you'd have in a sample or so as to count the amount of microbes that are in an area. This is actually one of my favorite ones to do, especially in environmental science, because it's a great way to test um, water quality. So the MPN method is used when you have maybe really dilute samples or you have samples where you can't get the microbes to grow on solid media. But the most important time you would use this is if you're looking for coliforms, which E. coli is an example of a coliform in water quality samples. So it can be used in food testing as well. But uh, so here you see a sample that has uh, a pond water and we're looking for coliforms because that tells us there's E. coli there, which tells us that there's fecal contamination in this water. All right, so I'll, I'll, we'll talk about the math part of the MPN or most probable number in just a moment. But first, uh, why does this work so well with your coliform organisms? Well, it has to do with um, these tubes. So the tubes that are used are actually called lactose broth tubes. So they have the, they have the, the sugar lactose in them and coliforms can ferment lactose. So if the, if the coliforms are digesting the lactose in the sample, you're going to see a drop in pH. So these are basically like pH test strips. So you see on top, you've got the 15 tubes that are, that are reddish. Those would be your lactose broth tubes. And then on the bottom after incubation, you see that some of them are turning yellow. So that means that there are enough microbes there. There are microbes there that are digesting the lactose causing a pH change and then and that's why you see the color change. So here's how you do this. In order to do this experiment, like I said before, we use it in, with water quality testing in our environmental science classes. You start with 15 of these broth tubes and the principle behind this is the more microbes there are in a sample, the more dilutions it would take to get rid of them. We're basically trying to see at what level can we elim eliminate or remove the coliform bacteria. So you start with your 15 lactose broth tubes. The first five you're adding 10 milliliters of of, of your original sample. The second five, you're adding one milliliter, and the third, you're adding 0.1 milliliters. So then you incubate them, like it says here, for 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius, which is a very important temperature in microbiology because that is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is the optimal growth temperature of your mesophilic organisms, which are most of the pathogens we care about. All right, so then we come back in a day, and we're looking for these color changes. So you'll see here with, our, with this original sample, um, five of the five, 10 milliliter tubes were positive, turned yellow. Two of the one milliliter tubes were positive and turned yellow, and zero of the 0.1 milliliter tubes were positive. So you take that information, and I'm not asking you to memorize this chart, but using this table, you'd be able to determine with about 95% confidence how many organisms were in a milliliter or 100 milliliters of this sample. So let's go ahead and find ours. So ours was, I'll do the remembering for you, it was five, two, zero. So you come down here and you see of the 10 milliliter tubes, five of them were positive, one milliliter tubes, uh, two of them were positive, 0.1 milliliter tubes, zero of them were positive. So you find five, two, zero on the table and you'll see that with 95% confidence, we can say that there are 49 organisms per, per 100 milliliters in this sample. And you see the ranges and stuff. And like I said, this is not, this is far from perfect, but it's a great guesstimate way to make an educated guess about how much contamination you see. So obviously look at the top. If if it was zero, 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 and none of the two, none of the tubes had lactose fermentation, then you'd know that there were very few organisms. On the bottom, you see 533 has a massive number. Uh, I mean, to get a sample that would actually be 555, it would just have to be so contaminated. I've seen it one time. We got it from a um, a cow pond in, in Denison, Iowa, and there was just obviously lots and lots of fecal contamination there. So, okay, so let me go back here. So this is the MPN or most probable number, a great way to assess water quality if you're looking for uh, any chances of fecal contamination. All right, have a wonderful day. Be blessed.